everybody. Uh, welcome to this morning session uh, for the two classes which we have combined, me and Professor Vandana. Uh, I'm really, really happy to introduce you to Dr. Arvind Virmani. He actually doesn't need any introduction. He is so popular as far as Indian economics is concerned. And he has been also very, very popular in international arena where he has been participating actively on various discussions and debates. He had done his PhD at Harvard University, worked at the World Bank, joined the Government of India for more than two decades, finally was the Chief Economic Advisor, Government of India, before he went to the International Monetary Fund as the Executive Director representing India. I happened to be there during that time when he was the executive director and I know how actively he participated in the board of the IMF. Not only that, he has really brought about substantial changes as far as India and its representation is concerned in the board. When I used to interact with members of the board as well as the staff of the board, I would always be told that here is a scholar a philosopher and a practitioner who brings all the wealth of experience that he has from an emerging country, trained in an advanced country, to the boot. Highly respected, revered personality in the boot. So, if you just Google and see for Dr. Arvind Virmani, you will have much more than what I can tell here. While he was into government jobs, he was also publishing lots of things. He has a couple of books to his credit, numerous articles to his credit, which he has published almost across on a wide spectrum of journals. It's a great pleasure to have him here today speak to you. And he's going to speak to you on capital flows and related to the macro interest rates monetary policy. We look forward to his presentation. After the presentation, We'll have a little Q&A, time permitting, and then we'll close for the day. So, we request you to come and talk to our students. Dr. Charan and Vandana, uh, thank you for being here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really uh, going to talk about Macroeconomics from a practical perspective. Uh, my experience in dealing with these issues uh, in the finance ministry mostly. And one of the key things one learned is that good macro management uh, on the line, so to say, is a combination of theory, empirical studies, and most importantly, the difference from the West, a thorough knowledge of the Indian economy. Because that is what uh, is necessary to develop an intuition. It's very easy to get standard recommendations from everybody. You, know, you can call up any monetary economist in the West, uh, whether at the IMF or World Bank, and he will give you some standard recommendation. But it's based on uh, an uncertain if any knowledge of the Indian economy. And what I want to uh, give you is kind of flavor of the, the very difficult uh, choices one has to make uh, when you are actually trying to do this uh, from a perspective of external shocks. And the reason why capital flows is mentioned uh, is because uh, that's kind of, I'm going to deal with uh, three uh, different episodes in some sense, which are kind of tied together by capital flows. Not exactly, but uh, that's the only kind of unifying theme. And as I said, the idea is not uh, to give an academic lecture, but to give you a flavor of how uh, difficult and how complicated uh, the actual uh, decisions are. So the first, uh, one I deal with is the BOP crisis of 1991. And the second one 
is a combination. There were a whole bunch of things going on. This was actually very complicated. It started with a capital search in 2006, 7, 2008. It was followed by a commodity boom, which really messes up how you deal with that first. And then the financial crisis in 2000. Everything occurred in a period of two, three years. I was lucky in some sense because this was the period I was the chief economic advisor in the finance ministry. And I had the chance, uh, as most academics do, to translate it into a paper uh, on dealing with these issues. And then finally, of course, we'll come to the current uh, situation and how uh, uncannily some of the same issues which arose in earlier periods uh, have come back uh, in this period. So first, uh, the balance of payment crisis of 1991. There are kind of three elements of this which I want to emphasize. First is uh, something which comes up again and again. If you have been reading the discourse uh, currently, there is a huge focus on the ex external side. People talk about the current account deficit, what's happening to trade, how bold imports have been going up oil imports, etc. That's all on the external side. And there is a tendency to forget uh, that there's an issue of external and internal balance. So the internal part is forgotten. And that's one of the basic complications of macroeconomics, that in some sense everything is interrelated. You know, the external balance is not independent. It's not just depends on oil price shocks uh, coming from Saudi Arabia or a rise in commodity prices. That's why we will be dealing with commodity prices subsequently. But it also depends on the internal balance, of which the fiscal deficit is an important part. So normally we think of external balance in terms of the current account and internal balance in terms of fiscal deficit. On the external side, uh, some of the issues which come up, we will be dealing with uh, uh, most of these. You know, we, we were in a situation of a fixed exchange rate uh, till 1991, and that gets us to the theory of fixed and flexible exchange rates. What happened to the debt and how it interacted with the current account deficit? Uh, you have probably heard of the trilemma, uh, Charan. I, I don't know whether you've done that yet. So some of the elements of that theory kind of come in here, and I will try to illustrate how we actually deal with this issue in practice. So this issue of monetary policies, oops, uh, <laughs> we can be sovereignty, uh, is related to all this. And then the solution uh, which we adopted in